Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And together, we form a couple of people who look very cisgender, heteronormative, not queer at all. That's true. We are, in fact, a bit more queer than we look. Okay, a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Also, we do our relationship a lot differently than people often expect. We are non-monogamous, consensually so enthusiastically so enthusiastically but all of that aside we are we fall into some of the same traps every every everyone i have ever met has at least contended with somewhere in their world which is we live in a culture our culture has some expectations. It sets up some things called gender roles. It sets mm. up some th- things around expectations of who will do what in relationships, yes. who will do what in households when we're running our households together. We are not immune to that, you and I. Definitely not. I thought we'd do a short episode because it's the end of summer, beginning of fall. It's transition time. And I wanted to do a short episode about what it means to have an effective discussion about how we're going to transition into what amounts to like school time starting again, homeschool starting. Um, I go back to classes. My business will pick up. Everything changes Everything for its changes. fall mode. Yeah, I'm betting a lot of you out there are in that transition mode because this is what happens at this time of year. Having an effective conversation about how that's going to impact our household means having an effective conversation about who does what and how we share the burdens. Yeah, right. And the reason I brought up normativity is that I think a lot of us, I know I, I'll just speak for myself, I grew up in a household that had a lot of heavily gendered expectations around who did what. It was, in fact, so deeply, um, like, mono, like, uh, heteronormative, cisgender normative nonsense that I didn't even see that there was a thing happening. And when I say nonsense, what I mean is it was not reflective at all. Yeah. And it never, my parents never had a conversation that gave my brother or I any insight into how they went about making those decisions about who's going to do what. How'd that go in your family? exactly like that you mean growing up with my parents and um it was uh just the way you'd expect it to be come 100 percent so you'd expect it to be if you were white upper middle class thank you thank um, you from from someone who looks like me yeah Yeah, someone like Um, you my my parents even though my mother had a full-time job as well and my mom did too So we both grew up in mom, dad, Um, families with cisgender, heterosexual, or, well, I don't think my parents were necessarily heterosexual. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that that would be an interesting conversation to have had with them. It would have. And I wouldn't claim anything from my parents, but there was nothing to indicate anything out of the It all looked like this mainstream story that we were presented, like a very after school special Hallmark Channel movie. My, My father came home. He kissed my mother hello and then went off to do whatever he was going to do while she made sure food was made and that us kids were dealt with and that us kids helped her do whatever but that was all on her okay in my household growing up there was a similar story and it was actually even more deeply um grooved i think my mother took it upon herself to do things like she answered the phone all the time. Mm. No one else in our house answered the phone. Um, she made food, even though she also taught my brother and I how to cook, but she made all the food. There were a lot of, um, there was a lot of asymmetry, mm-hmm. a lot. 
And then there was the asymmetry of the thinking. The Boy, thinking? there was a lot of it. Yeah. You know, this happens in our house and has been happening and we've been noticing it and trying to turn in attention to it for a long time. Somebody has to pay attention to all the stuff, all the calendar dates, oh, yeah. okay. all yep. of the who's wearing what shoe size, who has a raincoat, who's planning the next vacation. Have we aligned our work schedules? Who's going to pick up um, milk from the from the raw milk farm? I don't care. Whatever it is. Who's, who's but, doing the planning and therefore but then who's like the planning behind the, the planning yeah. too. There's like this high level. So there's this there's this mundane day-to-day -day planning like pack the baby's diaper bag and um, make sure that there are dinner reservations on Saturday night. But then there's the big picture. Hey, we have an anniversary. You and I have an anniversary in September. Right. It would be relatively easy for me to have internalized the message that I should make sure that the anniversary happens and that your job is simply to remember it. And if you remember it, then you I've have won. Check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I wanted to talk about this because I wondered what it felt like to you now on the other side of 12 years of practicing getting intentional about this. Okay. What's it feeling like now that, in fact, you are charged with running so much more of our household these days versus me? You have been taking more and more of that. But that thinking piece is still often left oh, yes. to me. Yeah, I have so a long you way do to a go. lot of the the day to day. You you actively take care of things. What? And what I have noticed is that I've I've started doing a little bit more of the thinking. It's not really visible because there's so much to do and you do so much of it. I'm like, yeah, I took care of this thing. And meanwhile, you've taken care of, you know, 150 other things like, oh, oh, there's a lot to do here. You have been holding up an incredibly complex system for a very long time. And um, I'll mostly, uh, what I have done is facilitate the stuff that you've thought up. So this reminds me of conversations that I hear. I hear them from clients. I hear them, um, all over the place. And, and you can even just go look up articles on like, um, the emotional labor split or the, mm -hmm. the, um, the household caretaking labor split. There is, there's a, a pattern that can happen where, and it tends to be a cisgender, a hetero couple thing. But I, I've seen this play out in lots of kinds of relationships where one person is like, I'll do whatever you want me to. Just tell me. Yes. Just tell me what it is. Uh -huh. I've done I'll that I'll do whatever lots. you want me to. Yeah. And this was a re that, that, that was probably the hardest conversation we had about be joining our households, like figuring out how to make ourselves into a a set of people who could share a household really mm -hmm. was, um, yeah, I don't want to have to tell you what to do. I need you to, in fact, take full responsibility for your house. So rather than 50, 50 or 80, 20 or anything else, I need it to be a hundred, hundred. Yes. A hundred, hundred. Right. So we both have a vision for the, the household and that we're both taking responsibility for it and acting on it. And then the job becomes more about talking about our visions, make but, sure they line up or whatever. But that said, I'm really super aware right now that I absolutely have, I have just allowed you to handle all sorts of stuff. You knew exactly what to do when the lawnmower stopped working. And then when the, when the lawnmower stopped working in another way, you figured it out. And the thing is, I never even thought about it. I was like, I don't know. I guess that's your problem. I just divested that completely. And while we do have an explicit agreement that you handle the tractors and the lawn equipment. Because for some reason, I have tractors now. Well, because my father left them to you. I mean, not you, for some was, reason, but yeah. it was unsupported. So now you have yeah. these things to deal with. We do have the explicit agreement. However, I'm not sure that I, I totally day to day own the fact that there are all kinds of things that fall into your like intellectual labor and, and caretaking. Um, you take care hmm. of the trash. And what I mean is like, you remember, I have never woken up on a Friday morning and run out to bring out the trash. Um, you just do. It is an incredibly gendered split that we wound up with. Yeah. 
And at times I've been uncomfortable with that, but we've also talked about how there are, there are things I don't know how to do and I don't want to right right now. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I feel about that. I have all sorts of mixed feelings right now, just talking about it. But one of the things that has come up over and over again is that we have to have these conversations, that intentional conversation. We have to keep having it. Yes. So that's important. What made it possible for you to hear me the first time that I was like, I am up to my eyeballs here, dude. And this isn't going to work. I can't homeschool these kids and keep track of everybody's doctor's appointments and run a business and, you know, add the list up. It's really long. I can't do it. I think it was the doctor's appointments that would push me right over the edge. Mm -hmm. It like remembering to schedule them all and then attending them all. That was the thing that would push my buttons. We eventually had to have a discussion about this. I wish we had done it much earlier. Uh, We were three or four years in before we really had this conversation. And I hear, I have um, classmates in in a program I'm in right now, and they're younger. They're in their early and mid twenties and they're recognizing this same need. Like, oh, I've got to set up my relationship now up front Mm -hmm. because these expectations, like they're, what we practice is then what we've come to expect, right? Yeah, I think of it as um, every family has its its private culture, mm. and that is set up. You know, uh, we're making uh, it. we're making it. Yeah, set up. We we make it right from day one. The more intentional that is, the more it's going to line up with everybody's values, rather than adopting society's values, the culture at large's values, and all that. So when we had this conversation the first time, what I remember coming back to was, well, we both value, we have this, this shared value of, um, of feminism, Mm -hmm. of, of deciding to specifically make sure that I wasn't held back any, any longer held back from my potential any longer because I had to uphold a bunch of jobs and and roles that were just thrust upon me culturally. Versus as a decision as a deci- that we right. made. Because that's different. I, I like what you just said about private culture because I don't think that's how we had the conversation early no, on. I don't remember it that way. But it is similar to how I coach people to have the conversation where if you get clear on your shared values, and I'm talking about a list of like three to six really core shared values it becomes easier to have a conversation where you say this this stuff all these jobs or whatever it's not working is it in line with our values yeah. to do the split the way we're doing it and i think that it's it bears saying that there's too much for most yeah. families there's too much going on like everybody's overburdened and acknowledging that I don't know a lot of people who are willing to give up on right. like, trying to create their life. Yeah. So we have to just yeah, so. carry on. So let's fairly quickly, because I want, I want to wrap this episode up tightly and just say, setting up to have the conversation about making a culture, making your yeah. family's microculture. That's, that's one of those early and often conversations early is important and so is often as things develop and things you know you have children or careers change or whatever or you just grow or you just change your desires change yeah Yeah. situationally things will change the only guarantee so the things that i have found very very important one this shared values a conversation that's separate from the division of labor is, yeah, yeah, what are our shared values? What is our purpose? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. So we've had other episodes where we've talked about this, the, um, the individuation accelerator conversation, um, relationship agreements conversation. There are, there are other episodes you can go back and listen to about getting clear on exactly what it is you're doing here. But now to drill down into this is transition time. Let's revisit what our arrangement is. Hmm. What is our arrangement? Yeah. What are our agreements? Um, 
what the another necessary step it, not just my values and my purpose is what's going on for each of us take a little inventory okay that's pretty important yeah because it can be easy to i find it easy sometimes to forget that you don't know everything i know right you know i'm having my experience my days i'm my stuff and i tell you some of it and i think i'm telling you things that i don't always tell you so yeah so by the way just to be clear Here's what's happening. And here's what's happening. I find it's easiest if we divide the years, the, you know, like a whole year is too long to make a plan for like this. Mm. So I divide the year up into quarters at the very least, sometimes month to month, but a quarterly discussion allows for an adaptation. So this is the time when we sit down and have a conversation about, so how are we going to handle the fall? Right. You know, so we have three kids homeschooled. Well, Three and a half kids homeschooled, yep. some kids in college, um, one kid going off on an adventure. There's there's stuff going on with the kids that needs to be wrapped into our schedules. But then there's our our personal needs too. Yeah. Not just our work, but our needs. Mm -hmm. At the end of this summer, I noticed, wow, super burned out. So I've taken off several weeks here and the burnout is easing. Thankfully, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I can just go back to the way things were. And this is, so I'm having uh, to take stock of what I'm yeah. doing. And when I see you resting and recovering from your burnout, um, I'm thinking about, and want to have a conversation with you about, okay, so when you are done with your vacation and starting back up with all of your things, how do we make sure you don't get burnt out again? And I don't get burnt out holding this all together how we do how are right. we going to do this so you've been doing a great job of stepping up and and bearing uh, you know your hundred percent you've been showing up a hundred percent but you're right burnout is really easy to slip back into mm -hmm. and that's um so i need to have some safety mechanisms in place for what what i do so that i don't just reschedule myself to yeah. the nth and i want to make sure that you don't try to make up for your vacation Oh. I want to make sure that when you get back to work, you okay, work. Okay, everyone, I feel called out. <laughs> you work at the pace that is reasonable for the work you have right now, and you don't try to say, oh, now I have to do all the work I didn't do for three weeks and cram it into this because you can start right back Are you back inside up. my head? <laughs> oh, no. I may be a little bit familiar with it. Oh, no. And I say this because you're not the only one who works this way. I mean, I work that way a little bit, but I am not as um, as persistent as you. So I can let that stuff go more easily. So the conversation, which we're, we've just started now, the rest of the conversation I see us needing to have is, is one that will be off air because it's about our, our personal details, yeah. our, your work schedule, my work schedule. And then most importantly, how are we going to prioritize love? Yes. Yeah. Because if we don't prioritize love, it will absolutely be the first thing to go. I actually open project relationship with a story of like, oh, yep. Yeah, the first place right. to cut always looks like it's from my safest, most secure, most securely attached relationship. Because I'll be there when you get back. Yeah, which is. It's uh, irrelevant because <sighs> meanwhile, you're spending the time without it. Yeah. And I'm spending the time without you. Let's not do that. I want to live now. Yeah. Too many people in my life have have gone before their time. You'd think that would be enough lesson. Both of us are listening to the book 4,000 Weeks right now mm. about time management. Um, I'll throw a link into the show notes. If that is notes. even the right way of <laughs> I think saying that it. it's a great it's book. It's a great book and has been reminding me, but you just put it so succinctly. It doesn't really matter how well I manage my time if right now yeah. I'm forgetting to be alive. Yeah. Okay. So I would strongly suggest that everybody go ahead and have that transition talk. If this is your first one, yeah, maybe you only get through some values and some some rudimentary, how are we going to hack our way through this fall? How are we going to do this? Yeah. And it can be easy to get caught in the details. I think the values conversation is key. The big vision yeah, does really help informs everything else, everything else work. And we all have to be flexible. We're still in a pandemic. We're still dealing with unknowns, so many unknowns that I think at least once a day, I see somebody on my Facebook feed saying, I am overwhelmed with the uncertainty. Yeah. 
this is a tough time. So having conversations with your friends, your partners, your family members, the people you can count on is going to make or break all of us, I really think. Yeah. If you have questions about prioritizing love in times of change and transition, I would love to hear them. Feel free to email me at jolie at joliehamilton.com. If you're if you feel comfortable emailing me, Ken at joliehamilton.com. I'm happy to hear. And we'll people. make sure that we do a follow-up episode. I want to revisit this topic as we head into the holidays. Yes. Until then, everybody. Thanks for thanks listening. For listening. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.